Hello, I'm Galen, and my cat is currently sleeping on top of me while I'm recording this. And this video is all about drawing anthro feet. It's something I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on around YouTube, and I felt that I could offer some information and reference to sort of serve as a starting point for anybody who's looking for help with drawing animal legs and feet. Either for your anthrofairy character, or maybe some other fantasy character that has animal-like legs. Either way, I'll be covering the differences between plantigrade and digitigrade legs, and using canine and feline examples as I break down a little bit of the anatomy and explain my personal stylized way of drawing the two types. One final note before we dive in is that when it comes to the stylization side of things, there's an infinite number of ways to draw stuff in general, so don't take any of my demonstrations as the definitive right answer. You are free to experiment and improve on my recipe to fit your preferences. So if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you like to draw or have interest in drawing anthropomorphic characters. And there's a good chance that you've heard the terms plantigrade and digitigrade. And if you have no idea what that is, I'm going to tell you now. And if you do, here's a quick little reminder. Plantigrade refers to a mammal or in, in this case, whatever fantasy character you're drawing, walking on the soles of the feet like a human or a bear. Digitigrade, on the other hand, refers to something walking on its toes and not touching the ground with its heels. So think of something like a dog, cat, or rodent, perhaps. Okay, so let's take a look at the skeletal structure of a canine leg to see what's going on and how we can use that information to apply to our anthro legs. So here is a drawing of a canine leg skeleton. And similar to a human leg, we've got the femur. Uh, we've got this section here, which is pretty much just the knee. We've got the tibia and fibia. So for the most part, it's pretty similar to human leg with the parts. But down here is where it starts to change quite a bit. So where our heel would be is this part here that juts out. And it's basically like a long heel that goes down. Then we've got the digits of the paw, which I'll refer to as the toes, and they create this sort of step-like shape. And I like to emphasize that step shape when I draw canine paws. So here is an example of a paw next to the skeleton, and you can see there's sort of a like a one-two step. And taking a look at a feline paw where there's the retractable claw it sort of just goes over that and is more soft and it's sort of like just a one step instead of the the two step more rigid canine paw so i put an example of the retractable claw so you can kind of see how it works and so this is how i like to do it and i like to sort of square off my shapes like this. That's just the style choice, but if you wanted to, you can make it more round and soft looking. Uh, but that's pretty much the takeaway from what the skeleton looks like and how that translates to the paw shapes. So let's take a look at how I sort of break it down and use this information in my own drawings. So let's start with a plantigrade foot. And uh, let, let's just, all right, okay, so imagine the ankle coming down. This is how I think of it. So the leg comes down and now we're getting into the foot. I sort of put a ball at the bottom of the leg to represent where the, where the heel is. And then attached to that ball, is a rectangular box shape and then attached to that rectangle uh, that prism I add a sort of cheese slope 
So from the side, it would look like this. And in perspective, like this. So this is the base block I kind of use for where the toes will go. All right, so we've got that. So a the main blocks I use to build a planter grade and throw a foot is a ball, a sphere, and then rectangular prism, and then that little cheese slope shape like that. And putting all, the, all those, and putting those together, we have this shape here that looks very similar to just the usual human foot but a bit more flat. I like to make uh, mine quite flat and simple. And we're going to be doing a canine foot right now. So on top of that, what I will do is add that two step sort of shape. And I, I like to start from the middle. So one step, and it comes up a bit, two step. And then I'll round the bottom of that. Add the next one. One step, two step. I'm drawing this a bit crudely, so it's not gonna be super clean, just to get the idea across. And then remember to overlap the toes so that they look better in perspective. So the ones on the side will generally be a, a bit more backwards, a bit more pushed to the back. And especially from the side, it'll be a bit smaller. And we'll have the front one. One, two step. And then I'll just connect that flat with the rest of it. All right, there we go. There's our basis for the toes. And then I will push out the heel a little bit more. Like that. That's the kind of shape I generally use. And then I will add the little ankle and then bring that up. All right. There we go. There's there's a sort of rough foot for a canine. And then uh, just to add a bit more. And then I'll go in and add the claws or toenails. And something that I've noticed with canine claws is that uh, generally they don't come out like how you might think of claws as just being a sharp triangle thing. Actually, what, what I've noticed is uh, they come out and they have sort of like a squared off taper to them something a bit more like this and then when they connect it's sort of more of a uh, triangular shape that's what I've noticed uh, from looking at pictures uh, but I mean you can do whatever you want if you want sharp claws go ahead but that's just generally what I've observed so that's what I like to put in most of the time okay let's finish that up Again, this is pretty rough just to get the idea of it. There we go. Let me just fix some of this shaping here. And then once I've done that, I like to thicken up the lines underneath the toes to sort of just give a suggestion of the paw pad underneath. I find that it works quite well. And if they're more of a fluffier character, maybe you want some suggestion of like fur coming down a bit, a bit scraggly, maybe something like that. There we go, and that, that kind of looks like there's a bit of fur growing over the bottom of the pads. And I pretty much do the exact same thing with felines, except a lot simpler, so it's actually easier. 
So I will just copy this and then I will remove this front section and we'll start again with our rectangle and cheese slip. And I also tend to draw feline feet smaller. So I'll usually give them shorter feet. So we'll get a little cheese slip. And I like to round them more. Give them more of a round shape. So I'll start with something like that. And then I will simply just start adding those rounded digits following the curve of that cheese slope that I laid down. And there we go, very simple. And then just make sure, at least for me, I like to just square it off on the sides like that. And then for the claws, I simply just add little lines to indicate the retracted claws. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I do. And it's very simple. Okay, there you go. That's how I do plan to grade. Moving on to digit to grade. I don't actually change that much from just how things are on a real animal. So I'll show you what I do change. So let's just, I'm gonna draw this very badly, but let's just imagine the, the leg coming down, got the knee, bends a little bit, got the calf here, right, got the knee, okay. And then what I'll do is I will bring out the heel here, again very similar, so I will have that ball for roughly where the heel is. And then I will bring that down very similarly to a quadruped. And then at the bottom of that, that's where I add the, the cheese slip, like so, and that a bit. And then from there, I will just do the same thing I did at the end of the other feet and add those digits. And yeah, the claws is doing this very rough, but you get the idea. And then I will extend those lines over here where the skeleton goes up. So that's an extra detail you can keep in mind. And let me just erase this. And then I will put an ankle bone feature here and then bring a line down. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I do. Very similar to what we did here. And that's it. So I hope that breakdown was useful and you can kind of see how I do it. Now we're going to take a look at the underneath and take a quick look at how the paw pads look because uh, that will probably also be useful. Okay, let's understand a bit about paw pads. So I'm going to start with a canine paw and we'll be referring to the back paws because the front ones are a little uh, different and have more going on with them. But for this video, we'll focus on the back ones and they're also more simple. I'm going to start with a more realistic paw and then we'll take a look at my stylized version. So I'm just gonna build it out here in real time. Go something like this. So let's understand the different parts of the under paw. In the center, the main big paw pad it is called the metatarsal pad. It is a mostly triangular shape with the main center part creating this triangle like so. And then at the bottom, it is more rounded. And on the side, you'll have two little sections that come down like this. So it looks something like this. All right, and that is the metatarsal pad. Canines have rather large 
paw pads on the digits. So we'll take a look at the front ones first. It is sort of this, it's a bit easier to just draw than it is to explain the shape, but it is kind of like this bean shape here. And it's more straight towards the center. So hopefully you can see this. So let me actually draw it on the side here. So on the outer side, it's this circular shape and it almost makes a sort of teardrop. And in the center, it is more straight like this. It's kind of hard to uh, verbally describe this shape, but hopefully this drawing here is clear enough. And we'll just copy and paste that next to it and flip it over like so. And then on the sides, the smaller, the smaller pads will come down like this and create a similar but more a rounded switched shape and we'll also copy and paste that there we go there we go so that should be a bit more clean and clear so let's add this to the pore there you go, that should fit in something like this. There we go, and let me just tidy this up a bit. And then those are all the paw pads. And then you'll have some extra detail here from the different toes touching each other. And we'll kind of make this sort of shape on the inside. And then coming out from each of the and then coming out from each of the, the toes we'll have our claws. And they point inwards towards each other a little bit something like that. There we go. And that is a canine back paw. Now let's take a look at the feline version. So we'll create our basic shape here. You can kind of think of it like a you can kind of think of it like the top of a bowling pin if that makes it easier so very similarly to the canine paw we'll have the main paw pad and it actually has more of a square shape at the top so we can start to make a simpler breakdown we can start with a rectangle going down and then we can make an arc half circle like this and then bring it down on the sides and that's can be an easy way to construct it and we'll erase this and now I'll define the shape a little bit more it actually goes a bit inwards and that's our main pull pad shape so now that we have that, we can go on to the little beans. 
and these are uh, very simple. It's pretty much just little little oval beans, and they will be smaller than the canine. And we'll want to follow this uh, arc of the outer shape we have. And you'll just fit the beans around like so. Let me move them a little bit closer together. And then There we go, so it goes something like this, and then around we'll have some of the, the outer toe. Then we'll have the outer digits kind of following along the same shape, making an outline. And then we'll just bring in a few lines down like this. There we have it, that's the paw shapes for the paw pads, following more uh, of uh, from real life reference. Now that we have this little reference, I can put it on the side. And now I'll show you how I draw the paw pads for more stylized characters. So if we imagine the digitigrade foot, from the bottom, it's that rectangle, and then the ball, and then if you remember the cheese slope shape, bring it like that. And that's going to be the underside of our digital grade foot. So what I do is coming out from the Coming out from the rectangle, I create a bit more width like this, and then I will follow the arc of that cheese slope. That's similar to how the uh, real paw pads come out a little bit like so. And then just like human feet, it goes out a little bit and then points inward slightly. So. I will just map that out with a center line and then have the front two pull pads here and so I'll connect that down to the arc line and then it just connects on the sides like this. So hopefully that is making sense so far and we will draw where the heel is here. So there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could have a, uh, I've seen some people where they have the pad and they sort of elongate it throughout the whole bottom of the foot. Or some people they'll have a, some artists I've seen they'll do the paw pad in the front and then they'll also have a little one on the heel. But for me, I just like to do one big one in the center and then the digits pads very similar to how it is in real life just a little bit more stylized and squared off so I for the canine will pretty much do the exact same thing as it is in real life and then I will have just big old square shaped beans underneath and then some smaller ones over here. And actually while making this tutorial and uh, looking at the real life stuff, I think I may actually change the way I do it and kind of make a more interesting shape. So I think this actually looks better.
and then we'll have the claws coming out. Okay, this is a little bit too messy for for me, and I feel like it would be helpful to show this more cleaned up. So I'm going to quickly do a bit more of a cleaner version, and then we'll take a look at the feline counterpart. All right, I've cleaned it up a bit more, so hopefully it, you can see it better now. And we will just copy and paste this, and erase some parts, and then we will make some changes to create the feline. Now we will draw the pad. Just start with that tapered square shape, and then the other two rectangular shapes on the side. And then the half circle at the bottom. And that's it. And just fix this a little bit. Make it bigger. And then all I do is just draw some simple ovals following the arc that we've made here. And once that's done, we will just show the toes a bit more. Bring some lines in. And there we go, we've got some plantigrade, slightly stylized paw pads. And for digitigrade, I literally just draw a normal paw. So like I've shown previously with the uh, foot coming down. I'm just gonna draw the, the back of the paw. So, go something like that. And I will literally just draw it like this. And this is very rough and not good, but it's something like that. There, so this, but imagine if it was drawn good, like an, an actual paw, but hopefully you get the idea. Uh, that's, I, I literally don't change anything from how the actual paw looks, so okay, I'm sorry, that, that was a, a terrible example, but I, I think from the other stuff I drew and what I've shown here, it, it should all make sense, hopefully. Now I'll just leave you off with a few tips about posing, and then we'll be done. Posing tip number one is that when any sort of pressure is being applied to the foot, be that standing, walking, or just leaning on one side, the weight gets dispersed amongst the toes and causes them to spread out. You can notice this if you look at your own feet while walking, and so when you are posing legs, if you have the toes spread out a bit when there's supposed to be weight leaned upon it, it will add a little extra bit of believability to the pose. Little bonus tip number two, this is just something that uh, I like to do a lot, is when you're having a pretty basic pose of a character just standing around, uh, there's not really much for the foot to do, so what I like to do is just splay one toe out to the side, and that can just make a static pose a little bit more interesting, just having that bit of variety. And the final little bonus tip is to take advantage of the environment and objects in your drawing to make some interesting interactions between the foot and the ground.
So uh, you'll see in my little example here, I put a small rock on the floor and the foot is just leaning against it slightly and that's causing the toes to raise up a bit and it just gives something a bit more cool to look at. So that, that's the little posing tips I have for you. And with that, it is the end of the video now. So if you've watched it through all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. And to those who knew this video was coming out, thank you for waiting. I really appreciate it. I hope that everything in this can help you in some way. And linked in the description of this video, I'll be putting a, a free image with all the breakdowns from this video and a couple of notes so that you can use it as reference if you want to. Feel free to uh, copy and trace it for practice or whatever just to keep it handy. And I'd appreciate any feedback on this video and if you have any ideas for stuff you want to see in the future. I don't upload that much but you know now and then when I feel like it I, I do like to make videos now and then so uh, just let me know what you think and what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun drawing and take care. Bye-bye.